Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, for sure, the bikes of, of today is uh, they're getting a lot easier with all the electronics and everything, and um, it makes it a lot easier for the younger guys just to, to you know jump on the bike and pretty much go for it. And you know, they have all the traction controls and uh, you know whatever else, engine management, and it just goes on and on. And I mean, it's the guys in the pit box that really you know set the bike up and. Um, and then the guys just go out and ride it and pretty much just make a, uh, you know, make the bike around the, the, the rider more or less. Um, so it is, it is definitely a lot easier than what it was, you know, sort of 10 years ago or so. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, you got these, you know, all these young guys now, they're, they're kind of without fear. And, uh, you know, I remember when I, when I didn't have a lot of fear and I know where they're coming from. But, uh, yeah. As they get older, they'll, they'll, they'll realise. You know, when we're on the 500 cc's, um, there wasn't really a lot of electronics at all. Um, you know, it was just your two-cylinder. The mechanics did their job on the bike to, to maintain it and keep it running and, and, you know, keep it kind of serviced and up to its best performance. But uh, other than that, it was really up to the rider. It's once you get pushed out the pit box, it's all, all your job. Um, whereas now, I mean, you can see a good rider on a bike that has an electrical problem and, you know, they're nowhere. Without, without the electronics, they're not really uh, getting any results. You really need the electronics these days, you know, to, to, to finish a race and finish a race in a good position. And you need the, more or less the mechanics um, that, that are running the electronics to be uh, very handy, uh, you know, with, with, the, with the tuning of the bike and the electronics and everything. Yeah, well, if you look at the superbike class now, you've got a lot of, you know, new bikes, uh, manufacturers coming into the championship. Um, you got Aprilia, BMW, KTM. Um, yeah, it's definitely uh, kind of a, a place for the future, you know, especially for manufacturers and everything. Uh, more or less, it was a, a team I rode for in, in 1998 on a V-twin Honda the Shell Advance Racing Team. Um, the owner of this team and his son was uh, living here in Andorra and I come here to, uh, you know, with them to have a look around. They invited me here and um, yeah, basically, you know, I like the place and uh, admittedly it's tax free. Uh, everybody knows that. It is a, you know, a little bit of an, an advantage to, to have that as well, but I mean, as on top of that, you know, it's a nice place and uh, there's, you know, some th plenty of things to do around here and uh, I, I've more or less enjoyed it and uh, decided to stay on. Well, a lot of it is travelling really. Um, this, uh, you know, racing lifestyle is, uh, does have a lot of travelling involved. Um, you, you've got to be at a race more or less four or five days, you know, during the whole weekend and then you're another two, three, sometimes even four days uh, in travel. And it's kind of hard to, you know, to get uh, a lot of time back home uh, because of that. So it's depending on how the races are. Sometimes they're a week apart. Sometimes they're two weeks apart. And um, it really just depends. And then sometimes we get a break and it's, which is good because, you know, I get a bit of time at home, but it's, it's in another way it's tough because because you haven't been here so long, um, there's plenty of things to be done, you know, like mow the lawns and cut all the grass and, and just house, normal housework, and then obviously wash all your clothes, that, um, or which my wife does, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's washing all the clothes that you've just been using the whole week and repacking them into a bag for the next race and, and so on. It just goes on like that. The motorhome is really good to have at the races. Um, but it is a little bit of a pain, you know, getting it to the races. Uh, I don't mind driving it. It's actually good, you know, because you can get, get to see a little bit of the scenery and, and as you drive around and see the countryside and, and so on. So it's, it's kind of good in a way. It's got its good and bad points like, like anything, I suppose. The, the first couple of years I was here, I was actually living near a gym. Um, 
quite a famous one here in Andorra and and uh, yeah it was good but uh, there was still you were sort of sharing machines with people and uh, I'm uh, how can I say it I've really since I've been a kid I was sort of brought up on a farm and uh, led a sort of lone not a lonely life but uh, yeah a, a life a lot different to what a lot of people are used to I think and uh, when you go to a gym like that that's really popular and it gets a real lot of people and I, I was just a little bit uncomfortable really with that and a lot of people got to know me of course and you know asking me how the weekend was and uh, the racing in general and the team and everything so it's just things uh, I, I don't really get involved with too much uh, therefore I, I've you know, made my own gym at home, um, bought all my own machines and, and mainly the things that I use, which, which I believe, um, you know, you need really to keep fit uh, to race a bike, which is more endurance stuff really, so it's not too many weights or anything involved. As for a timetable, um, I did do that for quite a few years. Um, I had been following a kind of a, a pro, you know, fitness program. Uh, which which I had a couple of people. One was from Red Bull, the the, the trainer from Red Bull. He he kind of uh, did me a program and so on. And I stuck to that for quite a while. It was good. It was helping. And um, now it's you know in between all the travelling and packing and racing and so on, and you only really get a few days to to train in between all that and. It's, it's more or less better to do it at the end of the season when it's all over and uh, try and get as fit as possible then before the, before the following season starts. Okay. As for a favourite track, I must say, um, I don't really have a favourite track to be honest, but uh, there is one that seems you know, kind of special to me, which is uh, in Czech Republic in Bruno. Um, I, always see, I just like the track, it's, it's got a nice size to it, the, the track's quite wide, there's a lot of room and uh, it's it's a little bit technical here and there, it's not too difficult but uh, I think for a first time, you know, for someone to go there for the first time it's a little bit technical to learn, there is tougher places but um, yeah, it's, but unfortunately um, there's been two years there where I've been uh, helicoptered out of it, <laughs> out of Bruno, so it is a favourite place but then uh, I haven't really had too much luck there and one was a major break, um, you know, around my ankle, uh, on, on my right, right leg and, and the last time was just last year in 2008 which, which I'd done a vertebrae and three ribs. So it uh, hasn't really done me a lot of favours but it is a track I really like. Um, as for a bad track, that's difficult to say, I mean the ones that I don't seem to really get good results at, or one of them in particular is uh, Mazzano in Italy. Uh, uh, I remember being there in 93 on a 125 and, and it was the year Wayne Rainey broke his back and, and I was a big follower of him and uh, not that that's got anything to do with it but you know that was probably one point that uh, made me think different things about that track anyway and yeah I've never really had a good result there and uh, this year we didn't even finish there we had mechanical problems or a clutch problem and yeah I haven't really got any great fond memories of that place. <laughs>